topic is over mean or average. Before we talk about it, let's talk about our last lesson over volume of rectangular prism, how much capacity it holds. The Town of Riverview provides a rectangular recycling bin for newspaper to each household. If the volume is 3,840 cubic inches, what is the height? Hey, they left up the height. Well, we could keep guessing. 20 times 12 times something is it. So again, the formula for volume is length times width times height. Another way to do it is base times the height. Um, capital B times height. Capital B represents the area of the base, the bottom of the container, which is a rectangle. So we can use either one. So volume, oh, there it gave us the volume. The given volume is 3,840. The length is 20. The width is 12. I do not know the height. So 20 times 12 is 240 times the height. So we could sit here and keep guessing. 240 times some, the height will be 3,840. Or we can use what we learned about equation. What operation is the inverse or the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division. So 3,840 divided by 240, this goes in one group of it goes in it. How many groups of 240 go into 1,440? I'll guess it's a six groups, and that is correct. So 16, so the height equals 16. To check your work, if you multiply the length, the width, and the height, 20 times 12 times 16, you will get the volume of 3,840 cubic inches. So what is volume of rectangular prism? Length times width times height. So mean, mean or average? You will need four students for this investigation. So student one got eight pieces of unit cubes. Five, six, seven, Student two got 12 unifix cubes. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm not going to really do this. Uh, student three got 25 unifix cubes. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, another stack of 12. And then one more. So this is student one, student two, student three, student four. Share among yourselves so each student has the same number of unifix cubes. So let's start sharing. So if, well, you know, student four does not have enough. So I will have to take some unifix cubes from unit from student three. So let's take out seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Draw seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Um, I need to give some to student one. Let's give um, three. One, two, three. So let's erase this part. Um, let's, uh, let's give two here. One, two. And one here. One. So let's see. Student 2 has 12, student 3 has 12, student 1 has 3, 6, 9, 12, student 4 also has 12. So each person now has 12 unifix cubes. So an average is your, each, your sharing among, among the entities, sharing among the items of people. There has to be a faster way of doing this instead of uh, like give and take, give and take, give and take. So each person has 12. It is called mean or average. In average or mean, this is how we do your grades. They always find the average of your grades. We take all your grades, pretend there's five of them, we add them all up, and we divide by how many grades you have, divide by five, and that's how you find your grade average for your class. So let's look at this one. St student one had eight unifix cubes. Student two had 12 unifix cubes. Student three has 25. Student four has three. If I add up all of those unifix cubes, it adds up to 48. And I divide it among how many students? Four. 48 divided by 4 is 12. So 
the average or mean, that means each person will now get 12 unified cubes. So you're sharing. So, so you're sharing that. So one person doesn't get too many. One person doesn't get too little. That's the average. The average person will get 12. So what is the average amount or mean? All right, let's go to, let's practice with some of these questions. So number one, 60 random students were surveyed by assistant principal Manhattan. He wanted to know the mean number of students who like math. The results are shown below. Using the bar graph, list the number of students who like math by period. 13 people like math in first period. 14 people like math in second period. 9 people like math in fourth period. 13 in sixth period. And seventh period is 11. So what is the mean? Average. So if I took the average class, how many students would like math in the average class? So just average. But this is above average. This is below average. We're talking about the average class. So we add 13 to 14 to 9 to 13 to 11. And we divide it by how many classes? Five. If you add up all these numbers, there are 60 students all, divided by 5 class. 60 divided by 5 is 12. So what is the mean or average number of students who like math? It is 12. Why, you mean, you might say? So if I took uh, some from here and put it here, took 3 from here and put it here, if I took 1 here and put some here, it would be average out to be 12 students who like math in per class. So it's an average average. Next one. The dot plot shows below, shown below represents the number of books read by sixth grade students in a month. Use, so each dot represents a person. Using the dot plot, list the number of books read by sixth grade students from least grades. So this person read zero book, zero book, zero book, zero book, one, 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 two, three, 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 six, and six. So according to this, we have four, eight, 13 students. It ranged from some who have read zero books to some who have read six books. So if you add up all of these numbers and divide it by 13 students, it adds up to 26 divided by 13. So what is the mean or average? So the average student will have read two books. Two books is the mean or average. So mean is another word for average. So you take all the numbers, you add them all up, you divide by how many numbers there are, 13, divide it, you get two. Next one. The stem and leaf plot below shows the number of sit-ups completed by students in Coach Martin's gym class. Let's look at this key. You take a number from the left, you take a number from the right, and you put them together, it means 32. Okay, so using the stem and leaf plot, Coach Martin listed the number of completed by students from least to greatest. Numbers. So take a number from the left, take a number from the right, put them together, that's 10, that, that, 12, 15, 24, 24, 32, 32, 35. And then what is the mean number? That means we have to add up all the numbers and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight. I would like to find the average. The average student will do how many sit-ups? So if I add up all of these numbers, oh, goodness gracious. Oh, where's my calculator? 10 plus 12 is 22. 15 plus 24 is 39. Uh, 24 plus, oh, this is 24. 32, 32 is 64 and 35. If I add all this up, let's see, it's 17. 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 23, 24. Okay, we're to 2. That's uh, 5, 7, 8, 9. 9 plus 6, 15. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18. 184. So it's 184 divided by 8. 8 uh, students. 184 divided by 8 goes in 2 times. Goes in 3 times. So the average student does 23 sit-ups. Is that what it is? So again, so what is average or mean is where you take all the numbers and add them up and you divide by how many numbers there are. Our last part we're going to talk about is variability and without variability. 
Data is a collection of facts such as numbers, words, measurements, observation, or even just descriptions of things. So sometimes scientists always collect data. They want, they want numbers about something, description about something. To collect data, people ask statistical questions. It is a question that uses data with variability. So we're going to learn a word called variability. So results with variability, results without variability. Let's, let's see, what is the difference between the two columns? Let's see, result, if it has variability, how many sixth grade students, how many students are in a sixth grade classroom? Which classroom are they talking about? Could be, how many texts do you receive each month? I don't know, I get a lot of texts in a month. Tyra keeps, she texts me more in February than other months. How many babies are born each day at Texas Children's Hospital? I don't know. It comes different. All right. How many days are in June? That's easy. 30 days. How many quarts are in two gallons? Um, well, each gallon has four quarts, so it's eight. How many syllables are there in, are in the word mathematical? Mathematical. Five. So what's the difference? From what I can tell, it seems like if it has variability, it is multiple answers. There's so many different ways to answer this. There's so many different answers. How many students are in a sixth grade classroom? Which classroom? Could be my classroom, could be Miss Myers classroom, could be Miss Peacock classroom. So it, all kinds of different numbers. But how many days are in June? It's just 30. That's it. It's just 30. So it has one response, one answer. So if something has without variability, it has one answer, one response. If something has variability, it has multiple answers. So let's take you one note. You tell me which question has variability, which one. So variability, again, has, is variable. It's var variability is like, I don't know how to break it down. Variability, the way I memorize it, it's just, it's, it's a lot of variety. Oh, let's use that one. Variability is like the word variety. It has a lot of variety of answers. So which, how many different flavors are in a bag of Skittles? Oh, I actually know this. It's eight. Is that a variety of answers? No. So this is without variability. It's one set answer. There's eight flavors in the original bag of Skittles. Grape, um, I don't know, orange, whatever. purple. Uh, that's great. How many hours do you spend working on homework? Well, it depends on the day. A Friday, not so many, but on Monday, yes. So this has a variety of answers, so it has variability. What grade did you make on your last math test? Well, if I asked this was a whole classroom, someone, some people made 103, some people made a, a 69, some people made 72, some people made 75. So this is variability. It has a variety of answers. What are the heights of the students in your class? We have some tall kids, we have some short kids. So, so many different variety of answers, so it's variability. So, develop your own original question with variability and, and without. So, variability, variety. What will give you a variety of answers? Um, how many calories did you eat today? Some days you eat more than others. So this will get tons of variety of answers. That has variability. Develop a question without variability. Um, I guess. Uh, how many hours are in a day? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many hours are there in a day? 24. No variety. So that's without variety, without variability. So what we talked about today was mean, which is average. It's finding the average person or average thing. So you take all the numbers, you add them all up, and you divide by how many numbers you started with. And the last thing we did is something called variability and with variability and without variability. With variability, okay, I'm memorizing now, it's, it's with variety. You have a variety of answers, tons of different ways to answer it. Without variability, without variety, it's just one answer. 